Hello and welcome to Fun with Creative Tech. This is the third video in the series looking at how to create your first interactive artwork in Unity 3D. Uh, we just had a look at particle systems in the last few videos and how to add a little bit of interface. So we got to this point where we had a particle system emitting and we could control the direction of gravity using a slider and some interface. So now what we want to do is just add a little bit of um, a little bit of control for the user. Now what I've done is I've created some scripts here. Let me up my folders here. Um, which I will make available online. I'm not going to go into the details of how the scripts are put together or how to program them at this stage. Um, I may do a video in future which kind of pulls apart these scripts and goes more into the coding side of things. But in this instance, I just kind of want to get people creating, using the scripts, snapping things together and getting some outcomes. So what, we've, what I've done here is created a script called Mouse Move. So what this script does is it, is it allows us to move objects around the screen using the mouse cursor. So what I'm going to do is put this component onto the particle system. Now to do that, if I scroll down to the bottom of my particle system, you'll see that there's this add component section here. I can click on that and type in mouse move and select the mouse move if I want, or I can click and drag from my project once I find the script onto the object and that adds the component. Now let's talk about this mouse move component. So this mouse move, what it does is it needs a reference to the camera in the scene, the main camera. That's because it uses the mouse's position in that camera space to determine where to move the object to. Then it has another variable here called distance from camera. That's how far away from the camera when we move the object we want it to be. And then smoothing, which I'll show you. That, that makes the movement smoother rather than sticking exactly to the mouse. It makes it follow the mouse softly. So let's turn that on and have a little bit of a play with that. Um, so we've got, we need a reference to our camera. So we need to click and drag our main camera onto that. Now, when we hit play, you'll notice, there we go. So we can move that around the screen. Now, if I change the smoothing down to say two, notice it follows a lot slower and smoother. If I change that up to something like 20, it will pretty much stick to the mouse. Now, this looks a bit silly because the particles are just moving with the mouse exactly. Now, that's because the particle system is emitting particles in local space. So that means whenever the particle system object moves, all of its particles move with it. If we get it to emit particles in world space, when it moves, the particles will stay where they are, but it will just emit at the new new position. So to do that, we want to click on our particle system, and now under simulation space here, we want to click world. And because we're doing a mouse trail, I might just make the um, I might change the shape to let's say a sphere, and let's make that sphere radius zero or as close to zero as possible. So that's nice and small now. Um, and I might change the sizes down a little bit. So 0.1 to 0.2. And let's change our emission rate to something like 60. And our start speeds from, let's go from 0 to 0.3. So we just get a little bit of movement there. Maybe make the size a little, little bit larger. 0.35. Okay, now when we hit play, it's going to follow, but notice that it's not moving all the particles as I move it. That's because it's simulating in world space, meaning the particles are staying in the same position in the world, but when the particle system's moving, it's not inheriting that position. So there we go. So we've got a little bit of interactivity now. All right, so let's have a look. Let's change the... 
Let's try changing the rate. Instead of on time, let's change it to distance and see how that goes. So now, it only emits as I move the mouse. Sixty is probably that's a fair few particles, so let's change that maybe. Let's go forty. And because we're using a mesh here, I'm going to ch uh, check 3D rotation and get it to randomize between 0 and 360 on all of the axes. Now let's have a look at that. Cool, now we're starting to get some, some interesting looking shapes. And again, I can, I can still change my gravity here and that will change how it works because it's still pointing towards that particle system. Okay. So now that we have our particle system how we like it, let's make a let's make a folder called prefabs. And let's drag our particle system into that prefabs folder. Now remember we use prefabs in the introduction to unity uh, to create the dominoes, this is much the same, so it just creates a copy of that object in your project, so we can reuse it later on. Um, but what we're going to do is with this copy, so for, under prefabs, click on your particle system, we're going to remove the mouse move component, because we don't want it to just move where the other particle system is moving, right? What I'm going to do is let's drag that out into the scene now, and let's call Let's call the one with the mouse move on it. Let's call it particle system mouse move. And let's call the new one particle system mirror. Now, on this particle system mirror, I'm going to add a new component. So, under the scripts, I've included a I've included a script here called mirror position. If we click and drag that onto the particle system, you notice this gives you um, your mirror position component. So what it does is it's asking for a transform to mirror, and then it lets you mirror it on the x, y, or z axis. So in this case, let's go. Let's give it. Let's point it to the mouse move particle system. All right. And now it's automatically set up to mirror on the x axis. So now when I move the mouse. Where's that gone? Oh, sorry. I needed to. I need to add the uh, camera mouse follow mouse move script back uh, because it removed it when I created the uh, when I took it off the prefab. So let's point that back to the camera. Okay. So now, when I move this particle system, you notice we get a mirror on the other side. And you can have a bit of a scribble with your mouse. All right, so let's make let's make another one. Let's do let's call this mirror X. Let's duplicate that so we can right click and go to duplicate, or we can press Control D. We'll do that twice. So let's make a mirror one that mirrors just on the Y axis. So that'll be upside down, and one that mirrors on the X and Y axis. So if we click on each of these, have a look at our mirror component. So we want this one to just mirror on the Y. So we're going to turn off mirror X, turn on mirror Y. And this one here, mirror XY, we want that to mirror in the X axis and mirror in the Y axis. Now, that's going to give us something that looks like this. So it mirrors in the four different quadrants. Now, this, at this point, you might want to start playing with your particle systems a little bit as well. Now, you can um, do things like, um, where is it? When you're using the mouse, it's interesting to do, uh, where is it? Inherit velocity is in here somewhere. Dun, 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 dun. Inherit velocity. Okay, cool. So let's, let's edit that in our prefab down here. 
prefabs particle system. Let's turn on inherit velocity. Now because we're editing in the in the prefab, all of these other um, other versions of it will pick up that change as well. So let's go inherit velocity and let's change that to 0.1 of the velocity. So now the particles are going to take the velocity from the mouse's movement. You notice they kind of push out now. Let's change that inherit velocity up to say 0.3. And you notice that they start to shoot off. Let's change that to, let's go 0.6. There you go, that's probably a little bit much, so it starts to get a little bit chaotic and noisy. And change that back down to 0.4. Yeah, so now if you play with the particle system, if you do it inside of the prefab here, all of the ones that you edit will, um, well, all of the ones that you have made inside of your scene will inherit those changes. So just going to make it drastically different. Now let's go back to your renderer. I'm just going to change that back to, let's leave it on mesh. Let's give that a spherical mesh, a sphere mesh. Let's change the size over lifetime curve. So I'm making go really big at the start and then flatten out. And let's change their color over lifetime. Let's go for a yellow this time. And it can go into a blue. All right, let's give that a go. Let's see how that looks. Uh, let's change our inherit velocity down to 0.2. Okay, the sphere is a little bit too um, chunky for the computer to want to render, so let's change that back to a cube. There we go. Aha, now because we're using a mesh renderer which takes a different type, well, which is using a different type of material here, it's not going to change the color. So just quickly show you how to change that. If you want to click on your material that it's using, which is the cube particle. Now at the moment, it's just using a, the shader that it's using is just the standard shader. If we click on this shader and go down to particles and let's change that to alpha blended. So that's a, a material which can be transparent. Now if we hit play, because this, this material will allow the particle system to set the color. It's a bit of a gross color, isn't it? So let's oh, hang on, set this to white first of all. I'll make the colors stand out a bit more. There you go. All right, so you've got something that's a little bit interactive now. So in the next video, we'll have a look at getting screenshots out so you actually have something completed. Cool. See you in the next video.